You know, worshippers of the Lord of Light, they always say, for the night is dark and full of terrors. Well, of course the night's dark. It's night time. That's kind of self-explanatory. So you don't really need that bit in the slogan. So you could cut that out and just go with, you know, for the night is full of terrors. But translated, that basically means we're scared of the dark. <laughs> what a bunch of pussies. I, I, I walked in the shadow of death left the fear. Yes, people, what is good? I am BA back once again with another reaction in the Game of Thrones series. This is episode 2 of season 2 and it is called The Nightlands. Last episode, we got introduced to Stannis and the Onion Knight and Lady Melisandre, so they are now in the mix coming into the show. Stannis believes the throne is his by right and he's coming for blood. Tyrion has shown up in King's Landing after being made hand of the king. Of course, Cersei is hating the shit out of that situation. John is on his first patrol with the Night's Watch north of the wall and Daenerys and the rest of her followers are all starving and desperate for water so they are desperate for resources and she sent riders in every direction looking for some sort of help. So yeah without further ado this is episode 2 of season 2 The Nightlands. Let's check it out and see what it's saying to it. I always thought those three castles separated by little bridges in the Iron Islands was a cool design. Really dangerous, but fucking cool. God, even that would be terrifying for all you have to having to sneak away from all these cycles just to go to the toilet. The way they've dressed her in this season, she's kind of got like a Peter Pan vibe about her. What do you want? A man has a thirst. Hey, Jack and Agar! A man does not choose his companions. These two, they have no courtesy. Well, I'll tell you one thing, that dude on the left is definitely not a faceless man. Get us beer! Should have asked nicely. Yeah, there's no point being rude to a person with a sword when you're sitting in a cage. These gutter rats belong to the Night's Watch now. That puts them beyond the reach of kings and queens. I was wondering about that. So if you get assigned to the Night's Watch, not even a king can ask for you to be sent to them or anything like that. That's actually a really beneficial position that lots of people in this world could escape to. Nick this artery in your leg. And once it's nicked, there's no one around here who knows how to unnick it. That inside leg artery is one of the most dangerous arteries to hit in the human body. I think there's one in each arm, one in each leg. And then obviously you've got the neck. Go back to your city and tell your masters you didn't find what you were looking for. We're looking for a boy named Gendry. That guy has got balls to continue his mission. He was like, do I need a penis or do I love my king? He chose Joffrey. Back with more men. And I'll be taking your head home along with that bastard boy. Poor Arya can't catch a break either, like she would actually be so below the radar just now if it wasn't for the fact Gendry was travelling with her. She would have made it safely to the wall, no problem, seen John, no problem, Gendry is the sole reason all of that fucks up. We were just speaking of your bravery in the victory against the Stark Auxiliary Forces. It was quite a battle. Well, he didn't actually do anything because he was knocked unconscious, but he did lead the vanguard into the charge, so you know, it was still brave. Welcome to King's Landing, my dear. The city is made brighter by your presence. Varys played that scene so slickly, like Tyrion has no idea how much information he got from her there. Ned Stark was a man of honour. And I am not. Threaten me again and I'll have you thrown into the sea. You might be disappointed in the results. Oh shit, this is such a good scene. The big fish eat the little fish, and I keep on paddling. Now, knowing Varys' overall arc, what is his reasoning for doing that? I guess he just likes to know what everybody's intentions are, so it would be important for him to even to get to know Shay. Seems they've stopped killing each other and started following this king beyond the war. No one even knows how far north the north goes though, so that is actually a huge title. Like, who knows the actual number the Wildling army could amass if they all got on the same page. One trip to the wall and you come back believing in grumpkins and snarks. <laughs> That's the exact phrase Tyrion said when he was at the wall, but I know for a fact that he knows Lord Mormont does not lie. If Lord Mormont's saying that, he knows there's something to it. Would you look at that? Nothing like the sight of a woman walking away. 
said Sam's penis. There was a milkmaid named Violet on the next farm over from where I grew up. One thing I don't get is, right, all the Night's Watch guys, they've got bits of white on all their armour. And I'm assuming it's meant to be snow. But if you look at that guy's jacket, it's clearly not snow. It just looks like he's been shat on by a bunch of seagulls. No? Ghost? No. He's not being aggressive. He just wants the rabbit. Give him the fucking rabbit. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure you weren't hurt. Oh my god, Sam. He is literally like Pepe Le Pew. What are you doing? Sam said you could help. Sorry, but Sam knows we're not supposed She's to. pregnant. What a fucking unnecessary complication. Seriously, Sam is actually fucking shit this season. I know he's lovable, but see if I'm thinking about it as a fellow Night's Watch member, I would be so infuriated. This dude has been completely distracted since he left the wall. I would be like, you know what, bro? Go back to the fucking wall. You're not built for this. You can't look at anything other than the females. You ain't thinking about any sort of mission. Get the fuck back up there and talk to Maester Raymond. He wants us to risk our lives for you. And you won't even tell us why. And you lot might think, oh, that's so heartless of you, because, you know, then Gilly stays with Craster. No, you know what? With the rest of the Night's Watch, I would be like, all right, let's kill Craster. You know, like they do anyway. It's just Sam is a fucking weak link. What will we do with her? Who's going to deliver her baby? You. I could try. See, this is delusional bullshit. Like, Sam's plan is to let one woman walk alone with a ranger patrol going further north into the wild while going through labour and shit. This is just sheer stupidity. And I know we all love Sam. I love Sam. But looking at these early seasons, he is a fucking liability. You know what, actually? The Night's Watch should have destroyed Craster long ago, but kept his keep and moved a set of Night's Watch into Craster's keep as the first reach when they do their patrols north. That horse looks fucking exhausted. That was great acting by the horse. Ah, uh, such a shame. These were, first of all, some of the most deadly warriors from the Dothraki Daenerys had left from that Kalasar. And second of all, just, they were such loyal dudes, man. They were gonna ride to the end of it off to find help for her. That is one of the coolest castles in the entire show. Looks like it won't stand for another thousand years. One of those rocks is going to give way. It'll be a horrific tragedy over at the Iron Islands. But until then, it's a gangster castle. Poor hopeful Theon with his little cloak. The single most fucking disgusting shot in the entirety of Game of Thrones. Like, why put that in? Seriously, why put that in? That is fucking disgusting. And I'm a hypocrite in that regard because, you know, it's a thing of beauty when I do that to a woman's face. But <laughs> I'm sorry, but I take nothing back. It's Megan. Who? She works for you. Okay, I'm not joking this time. I remember this scene, but it's absolutely horrible. Because poor Roz is going through it mentally, having to witness such a horrific act as a baby being killed, and then Littlefinger just return volleys her with a fucking threat to cheer up. You know, you remind me of another girl. A lovely thing I once acquired from a in Pleasure House. Trying to think, what is the actual really low point for Littlefinger when you hated him the most? Was it the blade to Ned's throat? Was it, you know, moments like this when you realise how dark he gets? Is it the stuff we see later on with the manipulation of Sansa? I suppose because we know later on how brutal things get, it's got to be that stuff. But even this stuff, man, he's got to be like number one or two on the hate list from season one on for some people. I had no idea how to make her happy. No idea how to mitigate my losses. And he could have just summed this up in a few sentences peacefully. He could have said, you know what, take a couple days off. I know that baby killing shit's rough, but at the end of the day, we need to make money. So come on, cheer up and come back to work after a couple days and let's keep making this money. But he doesn't say it like that. I would not say he succeeded in making her happy, but my losses were definitely mitigated. He's so lucky one of these prostitutes hasn't just walked up to him in his sleep and slit his throat if this is how he talks to them. I'll see you tomorrow. And you'll be happy. 
I also think there's some uncanny valley element to Littlefinger in that he doesn't have what you would call traditional masculine sexual desires. Obviously he has declared his love for Catelyn Stark when he was younger and things like that, but we don't actually see him lusting for anyone. Almost like Varys, except he has a cock and balls, so what the fuck's his excuse? Do you know what I'm saying? It makes him seem kind of alien. Maybe I'll hire this cook of yours. Wars have been started for less. <laughs> This fucking guy. Baby killing, Ned start betraying, piece of shit. Orders are orders. Quite right. Especially the Queen's orders. And Tyrion almost takes the place of like a superhero to the viewers' needs in this season because we need people to be pulled up for injustices from time to time and just nobody's doing it. So just these little scenes of Tyrion actually holding people accountable this season are a godsend. When your men slaughtered Ned Stark's men in the throne room, did you give the order? I did. Rat. He tried to buy my loyalty. He had no idea you were already bought. Not have my honor questioned by an imp. What are you talking about? How's that questioning your honor? He's literally explaining what happened. You will stand here and take it from me, unless you'd like to take it from my friend here. I intend. <laughs> Now I recognise that face from Glasgow. It's not a psycho face, it's not an angry face. It's the face of a man that's like, yeah, I'll fucking stab you. I hope you enjoy the wall. I found it surprisingly beautiful in a brutal, horribly uncomfortable sort of way. And again, Tyrion was lovable in season one, but seeing him do this to people in King's Landing just takes him to a whole new echelon of how much people appreciate his character this season, I think. To the new commander. And Bronn's starting to move up in the world already, man. I mean, for the cutthroat, he does it in such a better way than Peter Baelish. Because think about it, Peter Baelish is attacking the world from a place of his mind. And Bronn is just like, yeah, I'm good at killing people. But basically, both kind of end up similarly. Like, by the end of the show, Bronn ha is, has a lordship and all of that shit. Do you know what I'm saying? He is on the high table. He made his way all the way up to there just by being good at killing. Whereas Peter Baelish tries this whole show to politic his way up and the highest he ever gets is the same as Bronn got but also because of all the bullshit he had to do to get there he gets killed whereas you know Bronn's good at killing people ain't nobody coming for Bronn's lordship anybody who had a problem with Bronn he probably killed I saw a man kill another man just outside a tavern in Flea Bottom stabbed him right in the neck to be fair, Flea Bottom is like the grimiest place in King's Landing people will be getting stabbed there all the time how'd you know he was a knight? Well, because he's got armor on. Logic checks out. Any idiot can buy armor. How do you know? Because I sold armor. Don't count a hot pie's infallible logic with facts. You're a liar. Yeah, you shouldn't insult people that are bigger than you. No one gets to insult anyone. Unless you strategically tracked down Tyrion Lannister and just hung about with him all the time just so you could give him shit. And who's your father? <clears throat> he could have been one of those gold-hatted bastards for all I know. Gold-hatted, gold-crowned, he wasn't too far away. You're still a girl. I am not! Yeah, we'll pull your cock out and take a piss then. Is that just the show writing Gendry as higher intelligence than your average Flea Bottom person, even though he's from Flea Bottom, or was there another reason why he was able to tell Arya was actually a girl? Other than the fact, she, you know, to us, the viewer, she looks like a girl. But all that about cocks, I should never have said. And I've been pissing in front of you and everything. I <laughs> I should be calling you my lady. It shows he's got a bit of tradition and ability to him straight away, the fact that he changed up as soon as he realised she's technically, you know, a lady of Winterfell. What's she carrying? Mary oranges. Jesus, they're a cool house, but the Iron Islands looks like the shittest place to live in the entirety of Game of Thrones. Me? I don't like wine. Woman's drink. Crazy part of their culture though, they don't instantly respect the heir to the throne. Do you think I offer free rides to every man in jewellery? Lord Greyjoy. This is an even worse scene than Saucy and Jamie when you think about it, because she knows she's his sister. He doesn't. She allows him to masturbate her while knowing it's her brother, just for like ironborn banter. I don't imagine it'll be a story fit for children. 
Thank God that Panto has shot at that castle there. Only the coolness of that castle could distract me from the incest. Mother. And the fireplace, Jesus Christ. Imagine having a cracking fireplace. I'll take one of those. A proposal from Rob Stark. Who gave you those clothes? Was it Ned Stark's pleasure to make you his daughter? What a bitter old man. Mate, you traded Theon to the Starks for peace because you lost a little invasion attempt. Why are you treating him like shit after the fact? Because these are the terms you agreed to. I'm gonna have my son dressed as a whore. What did you expect to happen? He was traded as a child. Did you expect him to not take part in any of their culture or tradition while he was there? I remember my brothers. And I remember when my father was a king. I just don't get his father's character. I guess the only way I could describe him is as a petty, bitter old loser. And I don't see how the rest of the Ironborn haven't executed this dude long ago for being a petty, bitter loser. Yara! So good to see you, brother. This is a homecoming I'll tell my grandchildren about. Look at a little smug face. What are you being smug about, you fucking weirdo? Your sister took over command of your eldest brother's ship after your new father killed him. What's dead may never what's die. Dead may never die. I like what's dead may never die. That's a cool mantra. I pay the iron price. I will take my crown. But that is who I am. Yeah, and that's why you're crownless, because you're shit. It's not Theon's fault you're shit. Stannis is the smallest army. Why would I bet on the men with the worst chance? Because you're a smart gambler. It is never a smart gamble to bet on the thing with the worst odds. This bannerman will rally to his cause. There's no man in the Seven Kingdoms more honourable than Stannis Baratheon. Davos is so good with his convincing speeches throughout this show. Come with me and plunder the greater city in Westeros. It sounds really audacious when you think about it. I don't know actually what Stannis was thinking making this move without partnering up with Renly first. If he'd have done that, they'd have had a really good chance. As if she would just let you. You don't know how persuasive I am. I never tried to fuck you. Guy definitely wanted to fuck. The true god. They all think they found the right one. The one true god is what's between a woman's legs. And what do we say to that god? Today. He is the one true king. You Westeros are funny people. Men chops off your fingers and you fall in love with him. <laughs> yeah, it's called Stockholm Syndrome. Nothing to laugh about. Hashtag cancel random cave pirate. Still, always good to get pirates on your side. They will always have access to ships and anybody attacking King's Landing has basically got to come at it by sea. I've seen men pray to every god there is. Pray for wind, pray for rain, pray for home. None of it works. So Davos is my spirit animal right now. If I was to pick one god from this entire show that I'm like, yeah, that makes sense, it would literally be the god of death. I would be a faceless man because death is an actual thing that comes for everyone. So, you know, you got to respect it. You're losing the people. Do you hear me? <laughs> the people. You think I care? Don't think Saucy has ever had a single member of the people on her side, ever. Your gold-plated thugs just gave them their rallying cry. Queen slaughters babies. It's gotta be one of the most ruthless acts any new regime could do, and I give a fuck if it's medieval times, but to be so terrified that one day someone will come of age and lay claim to your throne, that you are prepared to kill them in their infancy, is just the most disgusting, cowardice thing ever. Lying on a bed of weeds, ripping them out by the root one by one before they strangle you in your sleep. That sounds appealing, Saucy. I can see why you love it. It's all fallen on me. As has Jamie repeatedly, according to Stannis Baratheon. <laughs> You're funny. He fucking is. You've always been funny. He fucking has. Your jokes will ever match the first one, will they? Back when you ripped my mother open on your way out of her and she bled to death. That was quite a good one. Oh, wait. For the sake of you, there's no bigger joke in the world than that. And all joking aside, imagine saying that to your own brother. I'm actually shocked that by the end of this show there are huge Saucy fans who love Saucy and don't like the fact she dies, etc. Like, I know more than one in real life and I just can't get my head around it because of all these cruel, ruthless acts she commits. Santa's an old friend. I've known him 30 years. I've never trusted him. Now, once he gets the smell of gold, he never stops. 
I love the way the actor portraying Stannis does him. He's like subdued, but also a little bit twitchy. And he's also clearly got a lot of stuff going on in his mind at all times. And he does listen to other people, but he's like trying to process it literally while there's clearly another part of his brain working. It's a lot to take from just the performance he gives, but that's genuinely all those elements come out to me when I'm watching his acting performance throughout this show. What did you say to him? I told him death by fire is the purest death. Yeah, I'll take a less painful, more impure death, if that's okay. My little brother has 100,000 men, according to the scouts. Men whose allegiance rightly belongs to me. I don't know why Stannis takes such an aggressive stance toward Renly. Like, if they just spoke to one another, teamed up and were like, look, let's take King's Landing and then decide afterwards what happens between me and you. They would have had a clean sweep of this by end of season two. You must give all of yourself. I have a wife. You've got to love Stannis' honour. I mean, he breaks it in a minute, but just the fact he said it first, you know? What an honourable dude he is for the next few seconds. I will give you a son, my king. Apparently nothing gets a man more aroused in the medieval times than the promise of a male heir. Imagine if he was like, take off the necklace too, I want to see you fully naked. She'd be like, no, 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 it's, uh, I like, I prefer to leave it on due to the second. No, take that off too, I want to see that neck. <laughs> What's John doing? Where's John going? Craster's out here as well, I don't remember this scene. Oh, right, okay. He's seeing uh, Craster bring one of the male babies out to the forest to sacrifice it. <gasps> Annie was a bit of a ninja for spotting John, spotting him, getting round behind John and knocking him out. Much respect to his stealth ability. Okay, and that was episode two of season two of Game of Thrones, The Nightlands. And I will be back in just a minute with my thoughts on that. So, The Nightlands, what did I think of that? First of all, I love that scene with Tyrion and that douchebag from the Gold Cloaks who betrayed Ned, etc. When he just calls him out on being such a fraud and then sends him to the Night's Watch. I feel like that is the single moment Tyrion becomes a fan favourite in this show and he doesn't let go of that title for the rest of it, basically. And how creepy was that scene? in the brothel between Littlefinger and Rosman. She's pouring her heart out after seeing a horrific murder of an infant and he just turns that into some long-winded story that ends with a really cold-blooded sinister threat. I mean, if you didn't already hate him, wow, he's given you more and more reasons to. The gold cloak's caught up to the group that's getting brought back to the wall and the fact Gendry's there, obviously I love Gendry as a character, but it's just putting Arya in so much addition danger and as I said during the episode if he wasn't there she'd be having a smooth trip to the wall right now and she would be meeting up with John before long. But it was quite an enclosed episode when you think about it. There was no Sansa, there was no Joffrey, there was no Tywin and there was no Rob. So yeah there was a lot of focus on other aspects of the story coming together this episode which was interesting. And Stannis still seems really conflicted to me like he's doing what Lady Melisandre is telling him to do for the Lord of Light but deep in his head I don't know if he believes it or not, have no idea, but yeah he showed he was prepared to go to another level, she promised him a way to defeat Renly if he had sex with her, so even though he had clearly took his vow seriously and was loyal to his wife up until that point in his life, he even did that in the hopes that it will bring him victory in battle. And also special shout outs to Davos talking the pirates into siding with Stannis, Davos has got such a silver tongue throughout this show. Maybe the second best silver tongue haver in the entire show for convincing people of things other than Tyrion, maybe. And yeah, I'm looking forward to episode 3 next week. If you've liked this video, click like, subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this, ring the bell to be notified as to when they drop. If there's anything you want to talk about, comment down below and share this around to anyone you think might appreciate it or want to watch these reactions along with us. My Patreon link is down in the description. If you become a patron, you get access to my blog, you get access to these reactions I put on YouTube a month and a half in advance and you also get access to full-length versions of everything I react to. So consider becoming a patron, it helps me and my channel out so much. And until next time, I have been BA. Peace.